it. Here it is in this sack. They give you three or four of these pie cuts. And what you do with them is, see in this, I borrowed this cup from the hotel. <laughs> but what I've done, Poo solution, yeah, this is the poo solution. So, I went out, I got a poo. So you should get in the kit and get one of these tiny little neat little beakers, and it's graduated. So you pour, here's your solution, you can buy this, it's, I think 25 bucks a gallon. Can you, can you buy that on the Western Ranch? No. Yeah. Western Ranch isn't that sophisticated. They're just selling you the deep worm Valley Valley Vet, you might. I can't I'm remember. Strong. Pardon? Pipestone has it, I think. Yeah. Actually, what I did, I just Googled. Yeah. And it, it came. What? Yeah, what does not Google have? So this is a 50 milliliter uh, beaker. You pour 28 milliliters of the solution in here. And, and there's a resource to this. Um, it tells you all about this on your handouts. And then, then you pour the, the solution in there. You put your two grams, that which you just figured out by two cc's, and then you stir it with our great stirrer here, and then you let it. Uh, then you pour it through this cheesecloth. So you, and then all the cheesecloth does is take out the big particles of manure, and then you let it set for five minutes. And then after five minutes, you take the McMaster slide. They give you in this kit, I think they give you three or four slides, which is kind of handy because you can set up three or four of these things. It takes you a lot less time. I do about six an hour, and I'm not great at it, but um, that's what I average. And this McMahon, I'll just pass this around so you can see. It has, it has a slide, it has a, a slide and then another cover slip that's permanently attached. And what you do is you take, you draw up your, after five minutes, and it has a chance to float up, you just draw it up with this pipette and you take, put it on your slide and then you just gradually, sorry Sharon, <laughs> like that, okay? and it gets between the two slides. And the, the, the only hard part is you don't want any bubbles between those two slides because if you have a bubble it, it messes up your count. You know? so you, and after a while you get hanging. You just kind of slant it in there a little bit and it drains down into it. And there's a, there's a resource in your packet there that says University of Rhode Island McMaster's Test. It's a video on there that you can Google and get it. And that nice lady, and Zajac, she shows you all how to do it. It's very easy. You know? All this stuff, I used to think I couldn't do it. I mean, I'm just a farmer. But we all can do this. You know? And it's very simple. And uh, we can learn a lot from it. And, like somebody pointed out, at 20 or $25 a crack, we can save ourselves a lot of money. Just takes a little time. You know? But the other thing that's cool about it is you've got a microscope and you've got a fecal egg count, you can go to your vet and say, I've got a thousand eggs per gram. All of a sudden, he or she says, wow, this person knows a little bit about what's going on here. You know? So, you know, and a lot of the stuff that we're talking about today, this is cutting edge stuff. You know, and vets that were in vet school 20 years ago, if they're not consistently continuing with their education, they not, may not know all these things. You know? um, so it is, you know, the stuff, the material we're presenting is, is stuff that people have been researching you know, last year, this year, and it's right up to date. So you might have to just kind of lead your vet along a little bit, you know, Give them some of these researches, resources like your tip sheets. Give them the consortium's website so she can, can get up to speed. Because many vets are not up to speed on sheep pairs on the barber pole, especially. So you kind of got to use some tact. Because some of them think they own the world, but they don't. Am I reading that label right? It says sodium nitrate or something like that? Uh, it says, let's see, what is it? Uh, I don't even think. It says sodium nitrate. So I know you can, on that website with the uh, McMaster's test at the University of Rhode Island, they tell you how to make it okay. yourself. It's basically a sugar solution. Yeah. All right. Do you, at, at some point, do you have to um, sterilize or disinfect that master slide? Yeah, that I always.
rinse it off. Because it's going to, after a while, it'll get a, it'll get dried salt section yeah. on it. Or, so I just rinse it off every time okay. with plain but water. you don't have to bleach it. No. Okay. No. And, okay. All right, shall we go on then? You have any plastic. Oh, yeah, this thing? Yeah. So here's the kit. Costs, I think it costs 60 or $70, and it gets you set up. Um, gives you more than you need, really. Please, next slide. Oh, you got it. Okay. So now we're getting to integrated parasite management, and I just put this slide here because we want to emphasize the goal is not to get rid of all parasites in your pasture. Okay? That'll never happen, and so we don't really want to even try to do it. In fact, we want to have some parasites in our pasture, some barbical worm in there, because if we don't, we're going to be selecting through deworming with just the ones that don't get killed by the deworming, right? And those are the two percenters, maybe five percenters, but if we deworm and our pasture is totally clean, we get five percenters. So we want to have some parasites in we just don't want them to be doing damage to our sheep. Okay. All right, so let's go next one, please. Okay, so the first two we have, we have basically four tools to combat the barber pole worm. The first one is the traditional one, deworming. The second one is grazing strategies. The third one is culling ewes. The fourth one is breeding with better rams. So let's talk about deworming. We all kind of are aware of that. We've done it. Our our parents did it. You know, it's been the run. The it's been the, the go-to thing we can do for worms. Um, the strategies have changed a lot in the last 10 or 15 years. It used to be uh, we just went out there and dewormed every sheep that we could possibly get, and if one jumped over the fence, we made sure we got that bugger because. Um, and. What the protocol is, what they've decided now with the research, is you use one dewormer until it quits you. <clears throat> you don't use one dewormer in June, then another dewormer, like Valvazin in June, Ivermectin in, in August, and something like Prohibit in, in September. Or you don't use Ivermectin one year, Valvazin the next year, because what it does, it just gets you to, to a point faster where none of those three classes of dewormers will work for you. Now, this is one point that your veterinarian is probably going to disagree with you because he or she was taught in vet school to alternate dewormers. But now that the current research has proved extensively to don't alternate dewormers. Okay. So that's just one case in point where your veterinarian and, and what you now know might disagree. Okay. And sometimes veterinarians can get pretty adamant about that. You know, so you just got to be tactful. Consult the American Consortium for Parasite Control. Oh, Dave said. Yeah, I mean, yeah, no, don't say Dave said that, please. Who's Dave? Dave! Dave, Dave who? What Dave said. Yes, Marie. So, are you talking class of warmer or warmers within the class? Because there's three different classes, right? There's, yeah, the question was are we talking, are we talking dewormers, are we talking, talking about class of dewormer or the dewormer in each class? Yeah, there's three classes. There's the white wormers, like the thousand. There's the ivermectins, and there's the uh, moxidectins, which is basically cydectin. There's a few more like it, um, and we'll go. And just so I don't forget it, has anybody seen long-range dewormer in your stores or anything like that? It's an epin epinectin, I think it's called. It's kind of a relatively new dewormer, and it's it advertises Boy, just deworm them once and you're good all summer. And it's true. But the problem is, what it does, it's a very slowly releasing dewormer. And so it puts those parasites up against that dewormer all summer long. And it's great for two or three years. And then all of a sudden, it doesn't work. Yeah, but see, the problem is, it's only, it's all or nothing. You know? So it's the same class as your cydectins. So once, once you use, if you use long range, which is, it's a, it's a dectin, call it, that class, and they become uh, resistant to that, they did, the barber pole worm becomes resistant to long range, you've just knocked out side dectin and moxidectin too. 
So the whole class is going to work for you. So it's great for two or three years. But then when it quits you, you're done. And so you can see how you can get in a problem by buying sheep without asking ahead of time. Is if somebody uses long range on their sheep and he says, look at my records, I got daily gains here on grass of 0 0.7, 0 0.8 pounds per day. And boy, that's great. You buy those sheep, but you also have bought that resistance to long range and moxitectin and cytectin. So that's, yeah, Henry. Um, all right, so it takes two or three years and then it doesn't work. And then you've got another class. That's two or three years. And you've got another class. By the time you come around, it doesn't, the first one doesn't work. Good point. Question is, if you if you use a dewormer for two or three years and your management uh, makes it so that that dewormer no longer works, then you switch to another class and another class. Can you go back to the original dewormer? No. You're done. You're done forever. So once they become resistant, they are resistant forever, and that's where we get into our, our really, we paint ourselves into that corner over there. So the, so that genetic pool of the worm that's in the flock, whether you buy the flock or if it's your flock or you add to a flock, that genetic pool, a barbacle worm, has inherent properties in it. So if, if those worms become resistant to like valvazin, and valvazin is probably the number one dewormer that we use in Montana. Because you know, it's on every feed store shelf. You know, it's prominently displayed, it's the cheapest one. You know, so we go to that first. And we use it, and if you're if it becomes your your worms, your own worms become resistant to valvacin, then they're going to be resistant to Safeguard and Panicure and Synanthic. All those white wormers. Not telling the whole story. Okay, refugia. Refugia. All that you're going to run into that term a lot, and that's the basis of of uh, breeding or controlling uh, the barbable worm. All it means is the exposure of a certain dewormer, whatever dewormer it is, to the parasite. So if you have lots of exposure, for this case, we're just talking about long range, it has lots of exposure all summer long, 100 days basically, that that parasite, the barber pole worm, is exposed to that particular dewormer. That is very small refugia. Okay. On the other side, if you if you use your Fumacha card and you only deworm, say, like 20% of your ewes out of the whole flock, that is a good refugia because the worms, the ewes that you don't deworm, that weren't showing any signs of infection, that means in all probability, those barber pool worms in those ewes that weren't showing signs of infection, they're not very good at their job. So. The refugia combines the ones that you deworm with that, that didn't get killed by the dewormer, the five or two percenters, with all these ones that you left behind, the, the guns that aren't any good at what they're doing, and they all interbreed. So your combined genetics resistance to the dewormer goes down, right? Okay, and that's refugia. It's just creating a situation where Genetically, there is less exposure at any time to a given dewormer. Okay. Does everybody kind of get, did I explain that half decent? I, I, I'm sorry. Okay, Amy, sorry. what's your question? No, I, you have to say it one more time. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so just think of refugia as the amount of exposure of a given dewormer to a given population of worms. Okay, and, and this is how, this is our, it's going to be the basis of our strategy to keep our dewormers working. Because if we don't, on, on one hand, if like what we did 10 or 12 years ago, we went out there and we had to deworm every month or else we would have lost the lamb. So every month during the summer, we gave, we dewormed them. Okay? That's before I knew about refugia. And so what we did is we just, every month, we put that dewormer out there to the, to the worms and they say, okay, I know how I can breed against this thing. Because it's always in front of me and genetically, as a genetic population, I have the capability of resisting genetic, developing genes that resist this dewormer. Okay, 
So that's what happens. That's what happened to us. Is we dewormed every month for five years. And that dewormer, after the end of five or six years, it no longer was any good. And it will no longer be any good from now till basically eternity. Okay? Why are you worming so often? Are you trying to get rid of all of them? Or? Partly, we didn't want any worms. I'm, I'm a dairyman at heart, okay. and I want production. Okay, that's what I wanted, was production. And so, my veterinarian said, strategic deworming. Deworming. <laughs> that was the quote I quote. Deworm every month. Get rid of those guys. Well, that was exactly the wrong thing to do, but as it turned out. But on the other hand, if we would have used some matcha scoring and only dewormed those ewes that had problems, that way we would have left a whole huge pot full of worms that were no good at getting that ewe sick from infection. And the ones that we did deworm, we killed all those worms, but we didn't kill two to five percent of them. And so those guys make with these guys over here that are not very good worms at their job. And so we get a lot more worms. That whole population is not very good at the deworming. Whereas if we deworm everybody, all we're left is worms that are resistant to the dewormer. Okay? Mercenaries. <laughs> what? They're a bunch of mercenaries. They're a bunch of mercenaries, right. Yes. So you, you raise a, uh, an issue that I'm curious about. How do these uh, parasites, how do the barber pole worms make? So there's going, so say there's, they're ingested. Um, they're ingesting the, the larvae, right? Yeah, they're ingesting the larvae, then they go through another larval stage, and then they turn into adults. And they mate. And they mate. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so, got it. Yeah, uh, asexual. They're bisexual, yeah. The, the males, like in a lot of situations, are drones. Okay. They're not good for anything but mating, you know. Okay. So it's the, so they're not they're not uh, blood sucking. I don't know the answer to that. Okay. But I don't okay. think they okay. suck as much blood because they don't they aren't making eggs, eggs so they're right. just hanging around, okay. hanging out there. You know? Yeah. Okay. I don't know how much blood the males do. Okay. I've never read that. One thing that they have this second evening. One thing that they, they have proven is to increase the efficiency of your dewormer is to get them into the corral, kind of don't feed them for 12 hours, and then deworm them. Okay. That does seem to help, the efficiency of the dewormer. Worm them on an empty stomach. Worm them on empty stomach, yeah. Uh, yeah. Amy, did you have a question? Yeah, I was wondering, is that 78% from 20 and 30 of views, is that your ultimate goal? And you're, you're like trying to work for that, so you might start with, Yeah, the, the question was uh, this this point here where it says 70 to 80 percent of the infection are 20 to 30 percent of the rules. That is kind of a research figure that they've done with over a lot of flocks, and that's what they found. So that's really cool because when you FAMACHA score, you're only going to be deworming the threes, the fours, and the fives. That's the score. We're getting to that too, what, what it looks like. but. Just deworm the threes, fours, and fives, that's only an average is 20 to 30 percent of your flock. So that's why it actually is faster for you to deworm using FAMACHA scoring. Because instead of deworming everybody, you just deworm 20 to 30 percent. And you can score them pretty fast. And just and with another person that's deworming, you can go, we can do 150 animals in an hour. So it's really cool. Okay, so next slide, please. So how are we going to do this? Here's that famous card we've been talking about all along. We haven't shown it yet. This is the Famacha card. Okay. It sounds you, so Italian. Uh, Famacha. Yeah, right. <laughs> Actually, it was developed in South Africa, and they, they got the, the <coughs> acronym Famacha from the guy's name. Okay. It was actually a medical doctor who developed. And he was Italian, right? <laughs> I don't know. He might have been. <laughs> yeah, he might have been. Yeah. So here it is. This is a score one. Nice red uh, membrane, mucous membrane. Score two is a little bit lighter color. Score three, and this is your tipping point. Score three is kind of pale, pale red, pale pink. Here's a four. 
not very much pink at all, mostly white. And uh, you're really that this animal here with the four is on death row. Okay? And fatal. Cream colored. So if you pop an eye open and you see a cream color, boy, you've got to get on the stick right away and hope it's not your daughter's favorite sheep because it doesn't have a lot of chances. Okay? And it doesn't matter which species, what, what breed of sheep this is. Doesn't matter what breed of sheep, goats, works for goats, works for any camel, alpaca, llama. Yeah, it's a universal thing. Okay, I had a question. I have one more. Yeah. I want to go over 50% of your flock has, you know, uh, three to five. The question is, what happens if, what do you do if over 50% of your flock has three, four, or five? You need more remember none of those three, fours, and fives. So, so then what, what does that help you get from? It helps you, it doesn't, it kind of makes you think, I got to do something else besides deworm to get rid of this problem. That's what it should make you think. So I've got to graze better, and I've got to start selecting for sheep that are resistant to the barber pole. So dewormer is a short-term answer to your parasite problem. That's what you gotta you gotta look at it as. And if you're deworming everything, that short-term answer is going to be very short. But if you deworm using the spamacha system, you might get along for. Long time.